Oh, uh, <laughs> well, that it, it's okay. okay. You yeah, can tell um, a, you can tell I'm not a producer. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Matt Meadow with EDM Matters, and we haven't had a guest on the show for a little while while we've been focusing on our EDM Chatter show. But after months and months and months, we finally have more kismet on the show, and we could not be more excited. We've been waiting for this moment, and it is finally here. How are you doing today, Omar? Woo! I am doing really good today, Matt. How are you? (laughs) I have to say I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I got a smog check for my car, doing adult things. I picked up some Love new that. hair dye. Picked up some new hair dye, Ooh. redoing the hair today. So yes, yeah, Love to see it. Yeah, the what roots color are, are you doing? I'm doing like a smoky gray, sort of like a Kakashi ah, sort of style. Nice. Yeah, uh, it's, I'm going with the. I want to do red, but uh, I have a job interview coming up, and my friend was like, maybe don't do the red before a job interview. And I was like, okay, good call. Good yeah. Call. <laughs> but uh, I want to start things off. We have we were talking a little before we started recording. We've known each other for almost two years now. And yeah. it, it's not often that I get to say that I've seen an artist all pretty much grow from the ground up. And yeah. I, I, as someone who works in this industry, it's – an honor because like so many times, you know, we see artists who have already gotten their start and now we're just kind of playing catch up and like, Oh shit. Like they, they've been doing great for a while. Like now I get to like be in on that as well. But I have the distinct pleasure of seeing you at your very first festival appearance, February 20. uh, Oh, I think it was 20. Yeah. 20 April, 2019. Right. April. Yeah. Because uh, it was my birthday month. Yeah, April 2019 in Florida at Asteria Music Festival. And just to start things off, like, tell me about that experience, like, being on stage for the first time. Because I I remember what happened, and I have such fond memories of it. But but I want to hear about it from your perspective. Oh, man. Asteria. Like, words cannot express how absolutely wild of an experience that was so obviously as matt mentioned that was the first show i ever played i had never been booked for anything before i had been doing like url festivals here and there but like nothing anything as remotely serious as you know hysteria Mm -hmm. or the stuff that i'm like doing now um when mig hit me up in december of 2018 to book me for hysteria i was just at a complete and utter loss of words Because the primary stipulation when it came to booking me for shows is that it just was not going to happen until I got older. And that's what people would used to flat out tell me is that there's no way in hell I would ever get booked for these events because I was like at the time 13, 14 years old. Um, And so, you know, when I went, when I went to talk to Meg and my mom about everything, you know, it was just such a crazy experience that, Meg out of everybody in this universe would give me my first chance at, you know, playing a gigantic ass festival full of hundreds of people in the crowd. You know, it was, it was just such a crazy experience. And then when I got up on stage, that was only even more crazy, you know, just Mm -hmm. thinking like, holy shit, this is like the actual moment. This is like what I've been practicing for. Cause like, for the months leading up to Hysteria, I used to go, d- like, every weekend, I used to go down to my friend Troy's house and play with, actually, yeah, my friend's, Troy ha- my friend's Troy's house, and we used to, he used to teach me how to use the CDJs and mm-hmm. how to play, um, and so I was just, you know, for me, it was kind of like a very random thing that I had never really been accustomed to before because I knew how to use controllers, but obviously, you know, industry standard required, you know, CDJs. Um, And so, you know, I just, as I was, as I was learning, the day was slowly but surely inching closer and closer. And then that day I pulled up to that bonfire with Lauren, you, Jake, and everybody. Yeah. That was like, that was what really clicked it for me was just being able to kind of see everyone there, be in this different area. Cause I had never traveled out of state before oh. at, this, at that age. Never, ever. I had never traveled out of state before. 
finally was able to when I got booked for Hysteria and it yeah. was the single coolest shit. And the surprising part is, even though we stayed there for a very long period of time, I didn't feel homesick, which was Aww. very odd. But, you know, I was... Yeah. The experience in general was absolutely amazing. Getting up on that stage and playing for the first time. I made a lot of mistakes, but, you know... I didn't notice any. Push past it. For reasons I'm not going to mention on this interview i would i am not in the slightest bit surprised that you didn't see it <laughs> <laughs> that was the, yeah. that was that was the day after that was the day after oh you did oh oh your, yeah my bad i was about to say because i was like you <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i thought that was like i thought you did it both day. no like, you, oh my. <laughs> let's 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 go I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, so I, I remember the day that you played the festival. Um, it was uh, it was forecasted to rain, and yeah. right right before your set, I think you were supposed to play at like three or four or something. Right before yep. your set, it started raining and it delayed. We all went into the house and just kind of hung out, and yeah. then which which ended up being such a phenomenal twist of fate because. You went from like a midday slot to a sunset slot. And as you know, people who go to festivals know that is such a magical moment. And yeah, not only that, but like you were the only one playing and everyone was, you know, not, I wouldn't say bored, but they were, they were ready to get back out there because of the rain and just seeing every single industry person in that crowd, every single attendee at the festival, just flood into your set as you played the most emotionally liberating set that smile on your face i have never been in like a more wholesome crowd it was definitely like top 10 festival experience for me it was phenomenal and i i really really cherish that memory thank you so much (laughs) but i mean since then i've seen you three other times in la i've seen you uh at 1720 open up for quiet bison i've seen you yeah uh, Exchange LA, you were opening up for Nitty Gritty and yeah. then uh, Moroccan Lounge with Vincent. And yep. I remember for like the next like year after that, I was just like, whenever more Kismet plays in LA, I'm going to be there. And if you remember uh, the uh, Nitty Gritty show, I was going to three shows that night and you were, and you were my first uh-huh. stop. Yes, I remember that. I remember I saw the, um, the video uh, that my mom took, because whenever my whenever I do shows, my mom always like goes on Facebook Live and records it. Oh yeah. Um, so that way her friends can watch because they like keeping up with my stuff. Um, and so um, <laughs> when we did the when we did the ex- uh, exchange show, she was up in the rafters recording me, and I could literally see you coming up the rafters coming down to give me a hug in the middle of the set like i flipped out i hopped up because like dude you have no idea like i i think out of like everyone in the music scene that i like really want to see again you are like 100 percent top three because mm-hmm. i miss you and your energy so much it's ridiculous but Likewise. like when that video, I just, I literally, the moment you, I saw you coming down those steps, I could feel it. I could hear it off the side, even though that loud ass music was playing. And I just looked off to the side. I saw you coming down and I jumped for joy and came over and gave you a big ass hug. And then you went back over into the crowd. And it was just, it was just such a crazy moment that, you know, like it's, a, it's, a, it's stuff like that, little things like that, that like yeah. really helped me enjoy playing shows a lot more because like at 1720 I wasn't like you know it wasn't just my mom and it wasn't just my manager my dad and a friend were in the audience that was the first time my dad had ever went to any show of mine wow ever which albeit alarming was very I was very appreciative of that um and then freaking my manager invited uh Chris Chan Ricky San um yeah and also, Wales was there. You yeah. and just like, like, a, like a whole group of people who flocked out in support of me and the other amazing artists that were playing that night. And just, 
that made things so much better for me because like being able to like play some of the craziest shit and then look out to the side and see you and Haiki just going like hey 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 like that just made my night and it keep and it kept pushing me forward um yeah I w- it was just an amazing experience every show I play always has some form of lasting memory with me and I will never forget any show I ever do for Hold that on. reason alone hold on to that because i mean speaking as a jaded 30 almost 30 year old who's been doing this for seven years hold on to that because like i have a running list of all the shows i've gone to like just hold on oh, to I those know. Me- hold, <laughs> hold on to those memories because like especially yeah. being so young like you have so far to go in your career and i'm so excited to see where you go and you're always going to want to look back on these fond memories and think of those yeah first times and just be like wow like this is where i started this is where i am now and definitely being able to like contrast those two and and remember where you came from is invaluable um but we're gonna stop there with our first interview we're gonna actually go and we're gonna um we're gonna go over more kismet's most recent track with pauline Hare. you should run he's gonna give us a rundown sorry uh, they are gonna give us a rundown on uh what they did with the track, how they came up with it, a little bit of the fun bits and pieces. So stay tuned. We will be right back. We are here with more Kismet going over their new track with Pauline Hare called You Should Run. This came out, I believe, two Fridays ago. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I think so. If I go on SoundCloud to check the date. Um, October 30th. Yes, it came out the day before Halloween. So, so roughly three, two weeks ago. Three Fridays ago. Okay. Either way. Yeah. Either way, new More Kismet track. Phenomenal production from both Pauline Hare and More Kismet. This is, this is definitely one of your, um, at least the first drop, one of your more subtle, not like in your face tracks. and. I know you have yeah. uh, Ableton up here, and I was hoping you could just run us through some of your favorite parts of the track. Yeah, so um, actually, first of all, this is FL. Oh, uh, well, that. It, it's okay. okay. You, yeah, can tell um, a, you can tell I'm not a producer. You, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, if I go over like the whole track here i really want to like focus on the second drop because i feel like the second drop doesn't get as much love as far as like a switch up goes and that is kind of the more you know stylistically more kismet parts of the song um so if i skip to this section right here at the three minute and 18 second mark um obviously we have the mac does it uh pre-drop vocal and in case you haven't heard the second drop of you should run yet Um, If you ever heard the entire song, period, what are you doing with your life? But um, (laughs) uh, as far as the second drop goes, this is what it sounds like. Okay, I am 100% positive that did not sound good on my end uh, because as I was as I was going through it, it it sounded very choppy, mainly because of the internet quality. But I still am gonna go over it anyway. Okay. Um, So right here up in this channel is the main synth from the first drop, but ran under immense side chain compression and EQing to get that thick sound um, Mm -hmm. and that choppier sound. Um, And what I did was on tracks four and five right here, you'll notice that I have two different automations running, both automate delay. Uh, This, these clips right here, the blue ones, um, these are the clips that um, enable the kind of reverberation delay that helps kind of echo the sound out, so. 
And Got then it. we have this yellow one right here, which is serving as kind of a reverb throw, but instead of a reverb, it's like a stutter delay. So, yeah. so oh, it kind yeah. of has that, you know, aerated spacey effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it works surprisingly well with the track to fill up space. Um, but in addition to that, I also wanted to have very hard hitting drums because, you know, that's just, you know, my whole shtick is having yeah. impactful, like impactful, strong, thumpy drums. And so these drums are like a culmination of layers, uh, the snare specifically. So the kick is just something that I clipped out from a Louis Vuitton pack. If you'll see here, the boost is like a little bit up. Um, and oops, I did not mean to <laughs> that yeah i accidentally I accidentally clicked something that i wasn't supposed to um but yeah so it's nice it's it's very it, it sounds very acoustic like a like a stomp almost but mixed with an actual kick and i kind of stuttered it so that way it would have that swing effect so ba, 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 yeah ba, 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 ba. so yeah just to kind of have that like very nice swing, swingy, flowy effect. I don't know how else to say it, but um, yeah. just to kind of have that nice bouncy effect that goes along very well with the synths. And gotcha. then for the snare, it's a series of different layers uh, with one of the main layers being this uh, weird thing from a drum loop that I made with some random drums that I had synthesized and a granular synthesis plugin. It sounds like very heavily panned, but um, it works very well given the context. So, and then I layered on a snare from an old Ricky Sand mix that I grew up listening to that I felt really fit as far as, you know, the heaviness and the transients go and it works surprisingly well. Okay. So okay. It, it kind of gives it that trappier effect. And then the latter two layers are just like pre-shifted claps that help, you know, really tie the whole thing together. So I think this is from an old track I did um, with underscores and soccer verse. Yeah. And then this is just a pre-shifted clap from a cashmere pack. Gotcha. So the whole thing just comes together very well. And then these are like these little weird hi-hat sounds that I made using the same granular synthesis technique as I did to make this snare layer up here. Um, and together with all those layers, the drums sound like this. So it still has that staggered effect, but it allows you to kind of like keep in the groove of the song. Um, and then everything else after that is just a lot of like random glitchy samples and vocal effects. So if I like solo out a lot of that stuff, um, it'll be right here. Uh, if I have it in the context with the drums, it'll sound a lot better because if I play it by itself, it's going to sound weird. So. Um, and then yeah, this this uh, this growl sound for those of you who are well familiar with my discography, you might recognize this growl sound from my remix for Moody Good and Slander. Um, I just kind of slowed it down to and pitched it to fit the uh, the the tempo of the song and the key of the song. Uh, oh wait, it's side chain, so it, so yeah, it sounded a lot better than I was intending it to. Um, and sometimes I like I like rendering out sounds from other tracks to hopefully reutilize in some form in the future, because mm -hmm. um, it just it just it's like sometimes like these like little fills or random unused synths can work really well in the context of a different song, um, and that's essentially what this little growl section is. Um, uh, another thing that I did with the main synths up here from the first drop is I isolated different little layers of it and reversed it, stuttered it, uh, reverbed it out. So that way it would have like those more, you know, elongated reverse kind of effects. So. So this effect right here, I stuttered this out so that way it would, you know, have that glitchy effect. And I also rendered this out because it just has that nice clippy, but also thick, girthy glitch effect. 
<laughs> which ties into the rest of the song fairly yeah. well. Um, and then, yeah, uh, another little fun layer that I made was uh, these formatted vocal layers. Um, so what I did was I took the, um, I took a snippet of Paulina saying uh, run uh, from like the, I'd run away with you if I could. Um, I promise you I sing way better than that, by the way, <laughs> but um, we're not even, we're not even going to go there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the context of like what I'm doing, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, so what I did was I took that little snippet and I looped it over and I took M Auto Pitch, which is basically an auto-tuning plugin. And I form it shifted it because it has the option for you to be able to, you know, form and shift it however you want. Um, so I wanted to have it, I wanted to give it that kind of woo effect. And that's what, you know, the form it shifter automation does. So that's what this sounds like. And then so it it fits it fits very well. Um and yeah, that's that's what a lot of these other little layers are. Um I also in the second half of the drop, I also added this little uh tonal snare layer, which is from an Oliver glitch drum loop sound. Oh, so love, love Oliver. Oliver's sample packs are literally a godsend for like random little glitchy tracks like this because they're they're so detail oriented with their production. I, I really appreciate you going over this track with us. I know it's one of my recent favorites and uh, I really enjoyed you kind of letting us into your creative process and showing us how you... Oh. <coughs> Bless Excuse you. Me. Thank you. <laughs> showing us how you create these masterpieces in my own words um thank you. <laughs> but i mean you know thank you so much for coming on omar we we've been wanting to have you on the show for such a long time and of course. i know i know we usually play games on the show but you know me being the first person to ever show you how to play smash bros at Asteria almost two years ago <laughs> we decided to go in a different direction and i again can't thank you enough for being on the show um is there anything you have coming out that you want to promote really quick? Um, I think I've, I've, I've kind of already talked about this on my Twitter page. Um, I was trying to keep it a secret, but, you know, I guess for the sake of making sure that people are actually interested in it, I felt like as I might as well go on ahead and mention it now. Um, I'm currently working on my first merch drop. It should be coming out sometime very, very soon. I'm not going to say when. Uh, because that shall also remain a secret as I have something else very special planned for that day too. Um, but other than that, I that's I am working on that. Um, I'm also working on an animated television series pilot called Stargazers with my friends. Um, be on the lookout for more information about that sometime in the near future. I'm currently working on getting all of those materials together. Um, and also this album that I have been talking about egregiously on socials for the past year and a half. Um, I just, you know, I'm very, very, very excited to see where, what next year holds for me. Yeah. I'm working on a lot of incredible things behind the scenes that I really want to talk about with the whole world, but I can't yet. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just really, really looking forward to, you know, what 2021 has in store for my project and for me as an artist. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I mean, I think I can say for all of us, we're also looking forward to it as well. Um, but this has been ADM Matters. More Kismet, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. We will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Hi, I'm Austin, one of the producers at EDM Matters. If you liked the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, which I'll get to later. If you want to see our previous episode, you can see it there. And if you want to subscribe, like I said, I'll get to earlier, which I'm saying now, you can do that over there. And in the meantime, I'm just going to let you think about that while I do whatever this is.